<laughs> and it has not <sighs> been the best for him at all. Okay, now look, looking at this, uh, do you think uh, it, uh, the, the, the statement mentions the fact that it will affect the common markets of uh, the East Africa? Um, with this situation, Burundi, how much can it affect? Does Burundi really contribute to the market in East Africa that much? Well, if you look at uh, the uh, the context of Burundi in terms of economics, uh, Burundi is not a powerhouse hmm. uh, economy in the East African uh, sub-region. I mean, in East Africa, you're talking of uh, the economic powerhouse. You're talking of countries like Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, Tanzania, okay. and to some extent, Uganda. Mm. I mean, Burundi is classified by the United Nations Human Development Index as one of the most poorest, poorest countries country, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Burundi, Rwanda, yes, I mean, these are the countries which but, are classified. But then, co considered as one of the poorest countries yeah. in Africa, is, does your girl, well, I mean, is this the story Africa always has? I mean, the poorest countries always having the highest corrupt index? Well, it, it, it looks so. I mean, because if you look at uh, the Human Development Index, which has been released, which are released by United Nations every year, mm. you look at most of the countries which are down and at least about five or ten african countries will be there and as you all know when you compare the per capita income and the living standard of african people here i mean <laughs> it's not the best and africa has always been living in abject poverty and our leaders has not been helping us in terms of helping us to come out of that abject poverty hmm. i mean as you sit here you compare the most poorest countries in the world and i can tell you out of the 53 countries in africa about 30 or 35 maybe among them. africa yeah mm. so it's no surprise that uh these countries will be classified as the poorest countries in the world look at their uh, living standard as we see i can tell you for a fact that the per capita income of an average person in burundi will not even be up to five hundred dollars it's four hundred yes i said will not even be up to mm -hmm. so four hundred dollars is <laughs> just <laughs> as you were saying mm. so uh, even i'm not surprised about that okay let me go to um douglas douglas just join us right here on focus 94.3 fm the program is still community watch as your discussion board right here on focus 94.3 fm again as i said i'm stepping in for the man nepugad neza uh, Nathaniel Atakusi. This is also one friend, Nathaniel. We were from Nebuchadnezzar. So, Pocho Honor Shishena, one can Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, Nathaniel Atakusi, Nebuchadnezzar is out, and I'm stepping in. My name is Ebenezer Hineko Jr. I have Douglas in the studio to also help us out. Douglas, welcome. Oh, thank you, Ebenezer. Okay. Now, um, if you listen to Bismarck, he was talking about governments not helping. Is it really always governments, but or we are also part of the issue of corruption and bribery. I think most of it comes from the government. Why you do you say so? Like, let me use Burundi as if in the Virang. Hmm. Burundi, apart from even their president, they've got two vice presidents. Mm -hmm. And just imagine all these people are in the system corruption here, corruption there. But even as they were saying, they were talking a lot about their police. Hmm. The police sector and the revenue service center. and the revenue yeah. as well. Uh, this corruption comes from the police sector, even as we know in Ghana. I think basically it's from the government, the public sector. Okay, now now let's run down to Rwanda. Rwanda, I mean, the one of the war torn areas in Africa. Imagine as the last, uh, we have Uganda. Actually, Kenya happened to be the yeah. first in previous times. Now, um, Kenya happens. To be with 31.9 percent which i think is quite encouraging compared to their previous record of index and but now we have rwanda being the last 6.6 percent what do you have to say about this do you think this is encouraging enough it's encouraging for kenya but to me i i, I still doubt from uh, the last time kenya was topping the yeah whole thing what if maybe it could come from you know they take all this in depth from the reports that comes in mm. from the reports that come in and i think kenya they were saying they had a problem with kenya because there were not numerous reports as last time mm. so to me i think there were 
Kenya, uh, the Kenyans. You think probably the the real effect of Kenya might not be what is reflecting here. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this. I mean, I should put this on record. Uh, the the coalition government. Yeah. Of Moi Kibaki mm -hmm. and Raila Odinga have been doing very well because Kenya formerly was the first on top. Yes, of, on top. Yeah. Of the East African Corruption Perception Index, mm -hmm. and now Kenya is is dead. It means the government, the coalition government, is doing something, and okay. they should be credited. Mm. Yeah. So in in that respect, Douglas, will you comment uh, any co coalition government for any state in West Africa? <laughs> At least not for <laughs> taking Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> taking Ghana review, not for West Africa. If uh, the rest of the West Africa countries behave like Ghana, because hmm. let's see the opposition and the ruling party always. They are against each other. I don't think. Uh, but I guess it's so in all other countries. I mean, right everywhere in the world. That's and, politics. Uh, yeah. Everywhere in the world. Okay, let world. me come to you, Bismarck. Uh, with Rwanda, uh, prevalence of six point six percent, the mm -hmm. lowest in the East Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, w looking at from the economic side, your contribution to the common market. Yeah. I mean, in terms of politics, mm -hmm. uh, the consequence for Kag Kagami. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 for Kagami, what chance has he? I mean, the elections is pending yeah. Yeah. very soon. Yeah, uh, don't forget that uh, in just about three weeks from now, uh, Rwandans will be going to the polls yeah. to elect a new president. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I mean, even before that, Paul Kagami was straight ahead of all the candidates who were contesting or who are contesting but he's been described as a dictator by by a lot of people i mean from from the international reporters uh, with the likes of even i think at the world cup we saw the likes of the death of an opposition yeah uh, opposition yeah. one of the position in south africa mm -hmm. yeah but uh with that issue a court has found those people who are who were behind that killings in okay. south africa okay yeah and those people have testified that mm. yes, they did that. So, President Pokarami can be spared here. And w I'll be surprised. Now, w will, you, will you look at it from the point of politics where and a politics certain sacrifices can be made? I mean, Paul Kagami um, assumes office if, again, he may become the president again, and then decides to give amnesty. To those people who... Yeah. Well, that can happen. Yes, I mean in Africa here, yeah, that can that can happen. Uh, but honestly, it will be very difficult for me to classify that as uh, using the killing as mm. a sacrifice in order to secure political power. Because I'll be very surprised if any of the candidates who are contesting mm. would defeat Paul Kagame to become the next president of Rwanda. You think he's more of a hero more than a dictator for Rwanda? Well, he is not necessarily a hero and not necessarily a dictator. But you know, in Africa here, most of the government do, especially when it comes to elections, and when the sitting president is contesting, it is very difficult for the position to unseat that president. Mm. Because one, the military and the police will always be on the side of the sitting president. Mm. And go to <laughs> Rwanda and see, Pokagami Party, I mean, is everywhere in Rwanda and even there are some top 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 state public officials mm -hmm. who are vowed to vote for Paul Kagami. Paul Kagami yeah because they think that I mean uh, from the death of Habir Ramne Nanana the man who died in 1991 which I mean, eventually led to the spark of the genocide in 1994 since that man Pogagami is the president who has stemmed the tide of stability mm. for the country of Rwanda. So it looks like almost most of the people do have some belief in him mm. that this man should be given a second chance. Okay, Douglas, um, I, I have a very interesting um, uh, statement here. It says that Rwanda's critics say corruption is so low because it is a police state. I mean, please as in please state. That is how they put it. Now, it is holding elections next month, as um, Bismarck rightly said, but opposition groups say they have been barred from taking part. And uh, Transparency International said it was unable to produce a comparison of how Rwanda's institutions fared because reports of bribery were so low. Uh, 